Top stories continue right now at 5. On your side, this is WHAS 11 News. Today, the Board of Trustees voted to terminate with cause the employment of our athletic director. We want to thank Tom for his many years of service and contributions to the University of Louisville. U of L president just moments ago, and right now at five, the man who built the U of L athletic department into a national powerhouse at U of L is fired with cause. The vote 10 to three, including a yes vote from the man whose name is on the football stadium, John Schneider. And it is breaking news late today. His 20th year anniversary on the job as the Cardinal athletic director is this Saturday tonight. Tom Jurich no longer with U of L. Good evening, everyone. I'm Doug Prophet, and I'm Kayla Moody. Rachel Platt has the night off. Jurich had the support of several head coaches and the support of some higher profile community members. But in the end, it came down to what the trustees who decided to start over the vote, uh, which we showed you live here on WHAS 11 came down just about at 430. Derek Rose has been getting reaction. He's been there all day long waiting outside and more on why Jurich really never had a chance. Derek, his attorneys were in and out of that meeting very quickly. They sure did. They were in and out of this meeting within about 10 minutes during that executive session portion of the meeting. We had since uh, this decision has come down, tried to get a statement from them. They did not want to speak on camera, but did say that they would issue a statement at some point later today. But you saw that vote, as you mentioned, Doug, 10 to 3. And there were three very impassioned uh, pleas, if you will, from board members saying that they did not agree with the motion to terminate uh, Tom Jurich's contract here with the Board of Trustees and it still was uh, of no avail because we had seen in the last few days and Doug you had even mentioned even up until this morning that there was still continued support to try to get this board not to go in the direction that it ultimately went in this afternoon. It was about a three hour executive session and afterwards Dr. Greg Postel the interim president here at UofL uh, made a few statements did not want to answer questions specifically about Tom Jurich calling it a legal matter just got some clarification from a university spokesperson saying there's the potential for this to be a legal matter so that is why he did not want to talk about the Tom Jurich vote but here's a portion of his statement just a few moments ago today the board of trustees voted to terminate with cause the employment of our athletic director we want to thank Tom for his many years of service and contributions to the University of Louisville to our students faculty staff and fans this is our opportunity to demonstrate the unity and integrity that define being a Louisville Cardinal. When I walk around campus, I'm always inspired when I see a student wearing one of the t-shirts reading, rise to the occasion. Right now, we need to challenge ourselves to do just that. That was Dr. Greg Postel just a few minutes ago. Uh, one uh, interview that you did not get to see live, that was of Vince Tyree, the acting athletics director, only answering several questions, saying that he thanks Tom Jurich for his service here to U of L, saying the question was asked, would he take the job permanently if it was offered to him? He said he couldn't answer that question, called it an unfair question, saying uh, that he did not come here with an agenda, but certainly wished Tom Jurich the best, uh, considering everything that he has done here at the University of Louisville. Something else he also touched on. He said he would not consider uh, undoing the Adidas deal that was recently extended, that contract that has been a uh, subject of a lot of speculation recently. That was certainly an important part of that conversation. We're going to try to turn that sound around for you and uh, bring it to you uh, during our next hit. Back to you. All right, thanks, Derek. I'll get it back to you there. And I'm hearing that a settlement with Tom George could range anywhere between 15 and 20 million. Of course, they offered him some settlement deals this morning and he rejected them. And I, and I think that's one of the reasons why the board elected to fire him with cause today because the settlement could not be reached. And I think in order to fire him, I feel like they had to do it with cause. Now, well, well, let's the matter of with cause. cause. Yeah, it yeah. means you have a legitimate reason in order to fire somebody so you do not have to pay any kind of a settlement. Um, there's been a lot of speculation on what kind of with cause that that was. I mean, you know, several several weeks ago, interim president Greg Postel was asked, was Tom Jurich asked to fire Rick Pitino and did he refuse? And Postel says, I did not ask Tom Jurich now, to fire Rick Pitino. The reason why he's asked that is we've been told that about a year ago last summer, 
or in the summertime, um, the, uh, the athletic director in Postal had a meeting at a local restaurant, and this was after the NCAA uh, came out with its information, and asked him to uh, fire Rick Pitino, and George steadfastly refused. He's always supported mm -hmm. Rick Pitino and wouldn't do it. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. But to be quite honest, when, you know, Postal came out after today's vote and announced the firing of Tom Jurich, but said that he couldn't discuss it because of legal matters, I mean, I, I think that Louisville is certainly preparing for a legal fight on what they or what they will not owe Tom Jurich in the end. Well, I think it's important to note that Tom Jurich was never named in the allegations that came out from breaking cardinal rules. Mm -hmm. He was also never named mm -hmm. in that, that yeah. FBI investigation. So many people, that has left many people to think that, you know, his biggest crime, so to speak, was just, you know, being an Rick ironclad Pitino. supporter of Rick Pitino. No, but, I, well, that and the fact that uh, his relations with the interim president have not been good, been chilly. There's been a firewall between athletics and university office and the president's office. That goes back to Jim Ramsey and David Grissom. Also, the chairman of the board wants to start clean. He believes you need a fresh start. No, I, I think, you know, and I've used this analogy a few times describing what the, what the board may be thinking. When your house burns down, if your house is on fire, you don't take piece of burnt wood and start building the house with, with burnt wood. And it seems like right now the board of trustees, you know, and everybody involved, they want to start completely fresh, completely clean. And that's what maybe we, we, we're looking at now. You know, Vince Tyre, who was the UofL acting athletics director at the moment, was interviewed. And our Robert Bradfield was in that interview. And just some clip notes of, of what he said. He, he understands that the fans are emotional about this decision that is today and he says it's his job to sue the situation um, you know and move the program forward he thanked Tom Jurich for his services I mean you know one of the things is we may be talking about the firing of Tom Jurich today but you cannot you know overshadow anything that he's already done here with the university what he did with the athletics department building up athletics to what it is today um, Tyre also said he feels like the leadership in place right now at Louisville does support athletics and that it will not be de-emphasized. Um, he feels great with the relationship that he has with the current coaches on staff right now. And, you know, obviously a lot of them, 15 just signed a letter just the other day supporting Tom Jurich. He feels like that relationship is great moving forward and that will continue to be great moving forward. Now we know that Tom Jurich's son, Mark Jurich, wasn't a part of today's action, that he's still employed by UofL, but uh, awkward situation now? Probably, probably an awkward situation. I, I think only time will tell to see how that plays out. Um, obviously, I think for a lot of people, in the, that athletics department, they were all hired by Tom Jurich. They're all very loyal to Tom Jurich. It'll be interesting to see how a lot of that stuff plays out in the future to see if they want to stick around and be a part of what is the new movement, so to speak. Well, and his son's so instrumental in the expansion of Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, so it will be interesting. He, he's to become see a how big fundraiser forward. in that department. With that, the Thornton's Athletic uh, Complex, Lynn Stadium, he was he was a big part in raising funds for that as well. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you look at the last minute effort today. Uh, so we were told by a source close to Tom Jurich that it even started this morning uh, that Jurich also got another settlement offer this morning. Uh, last night on 11 and 11, we reported that he would be fired today based on source close to Tom Jurich and that it would be with cause. That happened today and then we learn that they made a last minute effort. He rejected that and then the attorneys for Tom Jurich are in that meeting nine minutes. Th they've even said they didn't know if the board even heard what they said. Because they made a presentation and they were asked zero questions right. in nine minutes. I mean, Rick Pitino's representatives were in there for much longer and they, you know, they had slides, they had text messages, you know, they had all this evidence and they were never asked a question. It, de it definitely seems like the Board of Trustees, they wanted to make quick work of this and it seems like they've, they've done just that. All right. Well, speaking of uh, Rick Pitino, we have more on that. He is giving his first interview since his firing on Monday of this week. Again, he was fired Monday. It seems like it's been a long week already, but so much has happened in just a few days. You'll have to stay up late tonight to watch Jay Billis's discussion with the former U of L coach. It's going to air at midnight on ESPN. That's right. Airing at midnight. However, we did get a preview. Take a look. I was asked two questions. I said, and I want you to ask me if any other recruits in my tenure were ever given anything. And he said, that's not what we're here for. We're here for, did you have any knowledge of the Bowen family getting any money? Did you have any knowledge of a, an Adidas transaction? And I answered, absolutely not on both questions and passed the lie detector test. And again, that airs at midnight tonight on ESPN.
And our coverage is going to continue on this developing story at 5.30. ESPN host Bob Valvano, who has had some run-ins with Tom Jurich, is going to be back with us to share his perspective on the latest updates. He is the play-by-play, -play, the color analyst uh, for UofL broadcasts as well, along with Paul Rogers on radio. And he is the ESPN 680 host. He'll be joining us live here in just a few minutes. And moving on to other news now, we now have a taste of what's to come for pension reform in Kentucky. Governor Matt Bevin outlined the deal he described as keeping the promises. WHS 11's political editor Chris Williams is just back from Frankfurt with a look at what we've learned. Chris? Okay, the no changes for current retirees, no changes for state employees in hazardous roles, and a chance to move to a 401k style plan are some of the headlines. Governor Bevin did not release the actual wording of the proposal, saying his team is still dotting I's and linking aspects of the legislation to those already on the books but as he revealed bullet points he declared the plan would not make everyone completely happy but it was keeping promises made to past and current employees when you have a plan that fulfills every promise that delivers on everything that is contractually required that addresses every single person and takes into consideration both what is legally and morally appropriate and that even when it's done, everybody is slightly unhappy with, you know you have the right plan. And we have the right plan. Alongside Kentucky House Speaker Jeff Hoover and Senate President Robert Stivers, Governor Bevin laid out 10 talking points, a Cliff Notes version of what he'll call lawmakers to debate during a special session. We have exhaustively gone through everything we can to ensure that we do, in fact, deliver on the promise. That promise, he says, allows current retirees to keep their benefits and leaves unchanged the plans of employees in hazardous positions such as first responders. They will maintain the same benefits package that they currently are in. This is out of recognition of what they do. The fact that when they wake up and go on their shift, uh, be it in the morning, the evening, or whenever, they know that they may come back injured, hurt, or potentially having an ultimate sacrifice and having lost their life. Lawmakers will see reduced benefits. Most current employees will only be eligible for current retirement benefits up to 27 years of service. If they keep working, they'll be required to join a 401A retirement plan, which is similar to a 401K you might be familiar with. Future teachers and many other future employees will not see current retirement plan benefits. Instead, they'll be on a 401A plan. But it was clear that leaders heard the voices of longtime employees, especially teachers who were concerned that their retirement plans may disappear altogether. House Speaker Jeff Hoover, married to an educator, made this promise. For every state worker and teacher, understand this. You remain in the exact system that you have today a defined benefit plan until you reach that 27 years or that age if you're a different uh, tier employee. I think this is a very morally sound plan, a legally defensible plan, and something that the people of Kentucky will understand and accept as the direction we need to go in future years. The governor said this plan will take 30 years to put the pension system on solid footing, a, a longer time than he had hoped, but the most realistic, considering this could take an additional $60 billion or more to complete. Chris Williams, WHAS 11 News. Chris, thank you. The LMPD Explorer sex abuse case heads back to court, but the focus is on one of the attorneys. Today's arguments coming up at 530. He's sitting there having a beer and turn around and... You got this guy that just comes in the door. Hey, mate, get everybody in that beer. You know, and you turn around and go, who's that? That's Mick Jagger, man. A Louisville staple that served up drinks to Muhammad Ali and other well-knowns is moving out. What lies in store for Freddy's? That's coming up. And Louisville's taking the first steps into the technological future with Google. We'll explain coming up. Are you ready for it? And good morning, America. A lot of news to get to this morning. Good morning, Kentucky, and I hope you're having a great day. Ready for it. This segment of the news is sponsored by Neil Huffman Automotive Group.
on the next Great Day Live. HS Game Time, mail versus manual, bring it! There's the Aerofun's Monster Mash. We'll meet Angie Fitton's new fur baby. And music from Mads Tolling and the Mads Men. Great Day Live, weekdays at 9 on WHS 11. Hi, I'm Kevin Renfro of the Becker Law Office. 31%, what is that? The percentage of the population who have been to Mammoth Cave? The interest rate charged on a really bad credit card? 31%, think about that for a bit and I'll be back. Do you have a loved one that faces mobility challenges? We offer complete solutions for your bathroom. Our solutions offer slip resistant tub floors, comfortable seats, foot rests, easy to reach faucets and grab bars. Convenience, comfort and independence. Safety never looks so good and so affordable. Call us today for your in-home visit. It's no hassle, no pressure, and no costs. You have to have a lot of passion to grow grass in December in Denver. You have to know how many times a cleat can touch a single blade before it breaks. Even if it doesn't make the headlines, when it's football, you give it everything. Hey, Chris. You know hey. Appreciate everything you do for football, man. The game wouldn't be as good without you. <laughs> Protect your home from unwanted pests with OPC Services Four Seasons Program. Eliminates most all common household insects. We needed a solution. We called OPC and it was taken care of quickly. Family owned OPC Services has provided the best pest management since 1972. 31%. That's the percentage of injury-causing accidents that are rear and collisions. So use your rearview mirror. But if you've been injured in a rear and collision, call us. We'll help you get all you deserve. Just dial threes. It's been a staple in downtown Louisville for more than half a century, but today its doors are closing. Well, we're talking about Freddy's here. It's on uh, Broadway downtown. It's actually gotten great reviews over the years. And today, the staff at Freddy's 220 Bar are moving out. But the bar says it's only temporary. Dennis Ting was there as they packed up shop, learning more about why they're moving and some of the memories in this building. Freddy's has sat at this location on East Broadway for the past 57 years. Now, more than a half century after it opened its doors, it'll be closing these doors for the last time. It's moving day here at Freddy's. It feels like somebody ripped your heart out. Like losing a, a child or something. For 57 years, Freddy Scarlett has arrived at his bar on East Broadway, marked by a large sign with his name on it. I was a construction worker, and every winter I'd be out of work. So my brother-in-law had a nightclub, and he said, well, uh, come work for me and you'll have a job. It's a job he's held for more than half a century. Now 97 years old, Freddy is ready for another change. But instead of a career change, it's a location change. There was um, some code issues. Kevin Nelson, the manager of Freddy's, says the bar was struggling to keep everything up to code in a building that was built before the First World War. The building's 100 years old. Our fuse box still has the glass screw-in fuses, you know, so we're changing two or three of them almost every night. The bar's worn bar stools have also seen its share of stars over the years, with sports and pop culture icons often stopping by Freddy's when visiting Louisville. You got this guy that just comes in the door, hey mates, get everybody a beer, you know, and turn around and go, who's that? That's Mick Jagger, man. But at Freddy's, no matter who you are or what you did, you were family. You'd have a mechanic sitting next to a guy that's staying in a brown hotel in a $1,000 Giorgio Armani suit, you know, and um, They'd be talking about who's going to play what song on a jukebox. They'll move across the street with me. I'm just going across the street. While the era of Freddy's at 220 East Broadway may have come to an end, Freddy says they'll be moving to a new location, and he promises it'll just be like old times. The staff at Freddy says they're looking at three locations to move in right now. All of those are within a few blocks of this place right here. And they say they don't plan on staying closed for too long. They hope to be open between 7 and 10 days. In Louisville, Dennis Ting, WHAS 11 News. Now, one of Louisville's historic homes is no more. The Codes and Regulations Department says they could not save the Willis Cole home we told you about. This is in the 2300 block of Muhammad Ali, despite the fact that it was deemed historic. 
The home had been had not been kept up and bricks had been falling from the top of the home since last week. The former owner Willis Cole lived there from 1887 to 1950. He was the founder of Louisville's African American newspaper. It was called the Louisville Leader and it is archived by U of L. Cole was also an active civil rights advocate here in Louisville. And out of your first alert, storm team forecast, just a beautiful day out there today. You step outside, it doesn't feel like fall in the afternoons. Oh, in the morning, really though, it's a little brisk. Look at this. Big yeah, Pine, you're talking about uh, colors already changing in the leaves. A little bit here. We, we got this uh, photo tweeted to me, a little aerial view with a drone over the Joe Smith farm. And you can see just a little bit of that fall foliage starting to pop out here. And here's a look at the map and what we expect. Uh, the typical peak color for our area October 25th through the 30th. So that's next week. Right now, just some patchy color like we saw in that photo right there. We're nearing peak for some areas off to our east and northeast as we speak. And speaking of more color, we've got Color Fest coming up this weekend at Bernheim Forest. That's Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. each day. Looks like we'll have great weather for that. More low humidity, 77 dry Saturday and dry through the daytime on Sunday, 76. I think by Sunday night will be our next chance for some showers. Live look outside right now with our Midway University camera. Morgan and Morgan HD camera network looking over I-64 near Hurstbourne Parkway. 71 degrees our current temperature. And speaking of low humidity, down to 38% right now. And just a kind of a light breeze from the south around 5 to 10 miles per hour. There you see those uh, wind direction arrows. Temperatures in the upper 60s, lower 70s. Pretty similar for all spots with a similar amount of sunshine as well. 72 degrees officially our high today. That's the forecast we gave you yesterday. And just Three degrees above the average of 69 for this time of the year. 87, the record set uh, last year, actually. It's all green and once again good here with our current air quality monitoring stations. And the pollen levels are remaining at a pretty tolerable low to moderate level. All dry and quiet on Max HD radar, like yesterday, just a few passing high clouds. As we expand the view, once again, much of the United States is free and clear of any rainfall, with again a big area of high pressure keeping it clear around here. Many more days of dry weather for us locally. Let's zoom back in here. Future cash on those temperatures in the 50s after sunset. We'll drop to the upper 40s, lower 50s. Not as cold as the last couple of mornings, but still a chill in the air out the door tomorrow morning. Jacket weather and then tomorrow afternoon you can wear basically whatever you want. Some shorts and t-shirts as we'll have some more 70s for a little while tomorrow afternoon. We'll see another cool night tomorrow night and then gradually warming conditions with temperatures uh, heading to the mid 70s it looks like for Friday, maybe even some upper 70s for the city. A clear sky for tonight, low 51 degrees, comfortably cool we'll call it, and for tomorrow a high temperature of 75 degrees. So more sunshine getting a little bit warmer here day by day as we head into the weekend. Seven day forecast again 75 tomorrow, 78 on Friday and 77 on Saturday. Dry all the way through again the daytime on Sunday. It's going to be late Sunday and into Monday when our rain chance starts to increase as that next front moves in. But notice not too cold yet. However, a secondary front reinforcing shot of some cool air will move in and we fall to around 60 for that high with a few showers possible on Tuesday. And the coldest weather so far this season looks like the middle of next week. By next Wednesday, we're looking at highs down to the 50s and a heads up this weekend, literally uh, look up into the sky. It's the Orionid meteor shower uh, for Saturday, Friday and Saturday nights. Uh, we should have uh, mostly clear sky and you can see 20 to 30 meteors or shooting stars per hour. All right, Ben, thank you. And this just in, the continuing story, Tom Jurich fired by the University of Louisville shortly after 4.30 today. He has now released a statement through his attorneys and the local PR firm, Boxcar PR. Um, he said that they are disheartened. Uh, they believe the vote to terminate his contract was done in haste with inaccurate information that should have no bearing on his continuing employment. He wants to thank everybody in the city of Louisville and the staff at UofL for all of their support. But this is the final line in this, Kayla. Tom has instructed us, the attorneys, to vigorously defend his rights and reputation under his longstanding contract with the University of Louisville. 
lawsuits are coming. Mm -hmm, absolutely. You know, and this all comes on the heels of a letter of support, um, which was just one element of, of many, really, of people publicly supporting Tom George ahead of today's decision, some of those being uh, head coaches at the University mm -hmm. of Louisville. Well, just minutes ago, our reporters who are at the University of Louisville campus just interviewed acting athletic director Vince Tyree, who had this to say. I know there's going to be emotion for the fans. That's the beauty of this. They are passionate fans. I mean, that's one of the things that's, that's moved this program forward so long as having so many dedicated, passionate fans. And I, I recognize that they're going to be out there and there's going to be negative comments and uh, there's going to be division. But my role is to you know, unify this as best I can, not just inside the athletic department, but with the university and the foundation. All right, 13 U of L board members today took a vote. The vote to remove Jurich was 10 to 3, including a yes vote from the man who has his name on the football stadium, Papa John, John Schneider, voting to remove Tom Jurich today. Again, the first statement coming out, uh, a letter just thanking everybody, but he also is in saying that they're going to fight for his contract. And he celebrates his, uh, would celebrate his 20th anniversary with the school on Saturday. And the timing um, of this is just very ironic, but I do believe we have. Uh, a piece of video that shows that vote taking place. I appreciate Tom for what he's done for this university, for this community, for the athletics, and for the academic side of the university. Um, I think that he is owed some thanks for those things that he's done. Um, and I hope that we as a board, uh, if we do proceed with this, uh, vote, which I am not in favor of as well, um, that I hope that we can somehow relay that to Mr. Jurich. I feel like that um, the value of my diploma has increased because of what's gone on with the athletics. It hasn't um, been without some ups and downs, and I'm a person that feels like a lot of those ups and downs should be talked through and worked through. So I'm, I'm with uh, Brian and Ron. I do not support this motion. You know, when I look at this, like we approach questions, what's in the best interest of the, the university? Uh, that's not where I, where I come out on it. I mean, I look at the history, having lived here in Louisville, of what the athletic facilities have done over the last 20 years, uh, getting in the ACC, it's kind of unbelievable to me that, that the university has been transformed in that uh, in that manner. Uh, that doesn't mean that everything is perfect um, in athletics. There are major issues in basketball. Uh, we all know that. Uh, but here as a, as a board of trustee member of a public university, uh, I look at all those things and on balance, uh, I, I don't favor doing this. Those were the three no votes. You heard Ronald Wright talking first. Diane Medley, who actually ran the uh, trustees for a short time. She was put into, remember the interim of the interims mm -hmm. when in between when Matt Bevan was blowing up the board. And that's Brian Cromer who was speaking at the end there. Those were the three that voted no. Again, 10 voted yes to remove Tom Jurich. Yeah, absolutely. All of them saying, pump the brakes. Let's, let's revisit this. Let's think about this a little bit longer and have some more debate while we wait for some of these facts to play out. And our uh, team covering this, uh, Robert Bradfield, Derek Rose, out there all day long. Let's go to them live uh, to get more reaction. Hello, guys. Hey there, Doug and Kayla. Uh, certainly has been a flurry of activity within the last hour here. In fact, just after Dr. Greg Postal had issued his statement, uh, just seconds later, we were hearing from Vince Tyree. Robert actually was able to get uh, that interview for us. Yeah, Tyree um, did say that he did not want to address whether he wanted this job or not at this point full time. He did say that this was a bittersweet vote. Uh, he did say that his heart does go out to Tom Jurich and his family knowing them for several years. But we just heard from the statement of Tom Jurich's attorneys that they are planning to fight this vigorously. I do want to mention to you, Derek, though, also when the votes happened, I was standing next to the attorneys for Tom Jurich. And when the three no votes to fire Tom Jurich happened, they they had a sigh of relief, but when that final vote was tallied 10 to 3 to get rid of Tom Jurich, they left this building in a hurry and said we are not going to address the media on camera, but instead releasing a statement, which they just did. But they were uh, not really happy with this vote, understandably. And it was very uh, considerable 
the amount of support that we have seen over the last couple of weeks, three weeks to be exact since Tom Jurich was placed on suspension, uh, the support from the coaches, support from the community, including Lonnie Ali, and even we saw folks out here today supporting Tom Jurich, a few men that I spoke to. He, uh, one guy compared it uh, biblically, saying it would be a biblical implications should Tom Jurich be fired, saying that the, the program has uh, crossed the river and almost made it to the promised land and we're almost here and now you're backing out. Uh, the person I talked to was not very favorable of this board, uh, specifically Dr. Postal and uh, Grissom, the uh, chairman of the board of trustees, but that was a considerable difference seeing the support we saw here today versus what we saw for Rick Pitino on Monday. Well, and Diane Medley, when she she was when it was her turn to vote. She said no very loudly in that room as well, and you could understand that she was not happy with this decision either. Yeah, still trying to digest a lot of this information here on the campus of U of L. We're going to send things back to you and join you uh, during our six o'clock newscast. All right, thank you both. But again, as we reported last night at eleven, uh, Tom Jurich was told last night in the evening hours that he would be fired. That was our lead story at eleven o'clock. It played out exactly like we were told by a source, and that leads me to believe that David Grissom had those boats buttoned up. Mm -hmm. He knew what he was going into today, and that's why the attorneys were only allowed nine minutes in the room, and then psh, they were gone. Yep, they seemed very prepared to make this exact decision today. That's right. All right, well, we'll be right back on the other side of this break. The First Alert Storm Team forecast on WHAS 11 News is sponsored by Elite Heating and Air Conditioning. Don't lose your head over